States and the world, and that the United States of America will have to give way to Israel. We are expecting a new monetary system in the world mm -hmm. that will replace the monetary system in which, in which the U.S. dollar was dominant. <coughs> we have said it several times that the new monetary system is intended not only to continue the rip-off and yet they give fatwa, it is halal. But the new monitoring system is intended to further advance in the direction of imposing a, an economic and monetary dictatorship upon all of mankind so that you can rule the world. The attack on Libya and the use of the Security Council of the United Nations to impose a no-fly zone is a very, very plain and clear message to mankind that world government has come. And no country, no country has sovereignty now. We can invade, we can occupy, we can do anything we want in the world. We are the master of the world. World government has come. That world government is meant to advance the cause of imposing a political dictatorship upon all of mankind. So that one people can rule the world on behalf of one person. And he is Al Masih al Dajjal. We spoke, I think, probably the first day about so many other events that are occurring, uh, that uh, the last people to come out to the child will be women, <coughs> you know the hadith. Um, and uh, the attendant data that is together with this coming out of women is that they would dress and yet be naked, that they would dress like men, etc. And uh, the evidence is already here that they have come out. This is the feminist revolution, which I believe we'll be looking at today. Well, then where is he? It seems that he has, a, he has been released. It is at the very same time that the Qibla was changed. It was at the very same time that the Nasr took place, <coughs> the changing of the Qibla, the changing of the law of fasting, and the changing of the law for the punishment <coughs> of Zina. At that time that Allah declared, Tilka Ummatun Qad Khalat. At <laughs> that time, Nabi Muhammad والسلام, speaks about the Jal, speaks about Kabir Magad, and he suspects a Jewish boy named Ibn Sayyad, who is in Medina, and who is a physical being. He's alive, he's a human being, and he is in Medina. This is the Jal. He it is who told us that the Jal will not be allowed to enter Makkah and Maria. So it's time to put on your thinking caps. There's incontrovertible evidence that he said that the Jal will not enter Makkah and Maria. And there's incontrovertible evidence that he suspected someone in Maria to be the Jal. So it's time to put on your thinking caps. <laughs> he took Umar who with him. And thank Allah he did that. If he had taken Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu the story would have been different. He took Umar to question the boy. And 
the boy was, he was a Jewish boy, input to none to his answers, and Umar radiallahu ta'ala, who was angry, the messenger of Allah, give me permission, I'll cut off his head. No, Umar, do not do that, said the Prophet If he is Dajjal, you cannot kill him. The only way you can make that statement is if there is a possibility that he can be Dajjal. If there is no possibility, how do you say if he is Dajjal, you cannot kill him? There is only one way that there can be a possibility that he can be Dajjal and that is that he has been released. And so we have been given the information about the release of the Dajjal in this way, indirectly, for those who have the capacity to think. If he is Dajjal, you cannot kill him. It's elementary logic. And if he is not Dajjal, it will be sinful to kill him. From this we conclude that no one is under any obligation whatsoever to accept our conclusion. No. There are many other versions of the subject of Dajjal out there. Some of them quite colorful in fact. So people are free to choose whichever one they want. <laughs> yes, there's no obligation to accept our explanation of the subject at all. So we have concluded from this that the Jal was released in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. And we have concluded that we are now located, in fact I consider this to be the most important discovery in my life in the world of knowledge. That we are now located at that moment in the history, historical process. When a day like a month is coming to an end, and a day like a week is commencing. And so there is not much time left before the return of the son of Mary. Hmm? I could not have come to this conclusion if I had only studied in the Dalai For me to come to this conclusion, I also had to master the study of politics and economics and history to be able to come to this conclusion. Is there any reference to Dajjal in the Quran? Hmm? No, there is none. Not directly. If you're looking for a standalone verse, there is none. As I said earlier, and we will do it again tomorrow, inshallah, is there any statement in the Quran stating plainly that Nabi Isa alayhi salam will return? No, there is none. But that <coughs> is not sufficient for us to conclude the discussion, go home and eat biryani and go to sleep. That is a disrespectful act to the Quran. The Quran speaks to you in a more sophisticated way than that. Not because you cannot find any direct reference in the Quran to it. Does it mean it's not there? Because Allah speaks plainly and He says there are things in the Quran which is must do, which is covered. Hmm? When we go to the Quran and we take all the data pertaining to the subject and we go to He, who was sent to teach the Quran. And then it is as plain as daylight <laughs> that Nabi Isa alayhi salam will return. But those who choose <coughs> to reject that view, that's up to you. We're not going to pick up boxing gloves with you. No, sir, not at all. We have more important things to do. Similarly, to say, well, there is no reference in the Qur'an to the child. 
so we can go home and have dinner and go to sleep. That's your choice. It's a, an act of disrespect to the Quran, which is a book for they call me a fakkaroon. For I have the baroon al Quran. And so we need to go to the Quran and to, to take all the data pertaining to the subject and then go to the hadith of the Prophet and then probe to see the, the message that the Quran gives concerning the job. If there is one. And in the short time that we'll take this morning, we we'll look at two of these. The first, of course, is that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, said, nobody can challenge this. He said, recite the first ten ayat of Surah al for protection from the fitna of the Jal. So directly establishing a direct link between Surah al of the Quran and the fitna of the Jal. Okay? Since we have this link now between Surah al and the Jal, and the link is further enhanced when we go to that hadith of all a hadith pertaining to the Dajjal. Every prophet has warned his people about the Dajjal. And the prophet Noah, Noah alayhi salam, warned his people about the Dajjal. But I am going to say to you something which none ever said before me. The Dajjal sees with the left eye, he's blind in the right eye, he looks like a bulging brick. But your Lord is not one eye. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word Kafi. And every mu'min will be able to read it, whether he is Katib or Gairu Katib. We have dealt with this already in this retreat. Those who choose to understand this literally are entitled to do that. We, we have not been appointed as their teachers. They're entitled to hold their view. The implication, however, is since they believe that the Dajjal literally has one eye and it binds the other eye, in the next 20 to 30 years, I believe, it should not be more than that, when a man stands up in Jerusalem after Israel becomes the ruling state, and after this man has achieved the state of ruler of Israel and ruler over the world, like Obama is ruling from Washington, and Masjid al-Aqsa has been conveniently demolished perhaps with an earthquake. That's why we're having all these earthquakes now. So when that one happens, what a big thing, everybody having earthquakes. And then he reconstructs the <coughs> Shortly after he reconstructs the temple, I expect him to make the declaration. Because he can't make the declaration before he reconstructs the temple. I am the Messiah. It's going to happen. When that happens, it will be as plain and as clear as dazzling sunshine to these who are my students. That is the job. I mean, it is so plain and clear. He says he is the Messiah. He is a Jew. He is a young man. He is powerful. Even. He has curly hair. He is ruling the world from Jerusalem. And Israel is the ruling state. He has just reconstructed the temple. What more do you want? He is the judge. But along comes he who says, no, he cannot be the Jal. Because the prophet said, the Jal has one eye, and this man has two. He can't be the Jal. That is the price that they will pay. Because he would be the Jal. It is they who have misinterpreted, misunderstood the Hadith. Hmm? He has one eye, he sees with his left eye, and the left eye symbolizes, we have said, knowledge externally acquired. 
knowledge externally acquired. And the right eye symbolizes internal knowledge, <coughs> internal insight. The external eye, the internal eye. The minute you secularize, you take Allah out of something, you become wise. He closes this door. So when you secularize knowledge, then you become one-eyed in knowledge. And that's what the Jal has done to the world today. And so when Musa alayhi salam was asked, are you the most learned man in the world? He should have immediately said, praise is due to Allah. Alhamdulillah for Prakuli the Almin Alim. He is the most learned. He didn't say that. He said, I am indeed the most learned man in the world. That's it. That's it. So now we are given the story of Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam in order to explain the jam. The most important passage in the whole Quran for introducing you to the study of the modern age and its reality is the passage of the Quran pertaining to the meeting of Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam. Hmm? For us, this is linked to the Jal. This is the Quran in Surah al explaining to us the challenge of the Jal. That Musa alayhi salam on three occasions is incapable of penetrating the reality of the events and as a consequence makes judgment which is incorrect. Even if you have graduated from Al-Azhar with a PhD at Takhassus after 12 years, <laughs> you will still make mistakes as he made mistakes unless in those matters pertaining to the Jal, your judgment is based not only on that which is externally acquired, but also that which is internally received. And you cannot see with the internal eye unless you have no, no. The Jal is blind in the right eye. And we also will be blind in the right eye unless we have no with which to see. And so Surah Al-Kaf comes now with its second link to the child. And that is what we did last night. Recite Surah Al-Kaf on the day of Jum'ah. And you will get no from the Samawat to the up. You know what is Samawat now. And that noor will stay with you until the next <coughs> Jum'ah. The Sufis give us an elaborate theory of noor. And my teacher, Mawlana Fadur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah, has often spoken and even written about it. But he trained me to be very critical in my thinking. He trained me like that. And as a consequence, even though some almost 40 years have passed since he died, I have still resisted teaching and writing on some subjects on which he taught and write. Using my judgment. And this is one of them. So you will not see in my writing and you will not hear me quote in certain ahadiths which he quoted, my own teacher. And no one can doubt my love for him. No one can doubt the debts I owe to him for whatever little knowledge I have. Hmm? So the Sufi theory of the passage of Noor to the 
silsila from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam and to the shuyukh to a long line the shajara until it comes to the sheikh and then from the sheikh to his murid this theory of the passage of Noor I don't speak about I'm not even going to reject it. I don't need to do that. Why? Because Nabi Muhammad was given me another one, a much simpler one, and it's based on the Sunnah. Recite Surah al on the day of Jamaat. And you get to do it. You can't be plainer than that. So we have here now links between Surah al and the Jal. Because in order to deal with the jar, you need the nur. Mm -hmm. He comes with shirk. And in the hadith, in the musnad of Imam Ahmad, his shirk will be more difficult to recognize on a black ant, on a black stone, in the darkness of the night. Because nur. How can we see something which is so hidden, a black ant on a black stone in the darkness of the night? Answer, you need a torchlight, you need light. So it is not with classical education that you'll be able, you'll be able to recognize the shirk. No, it is with internal intuitive spiritual insight to nur from Allah. Ittaku firasat al mu'min fa inna hu yanzulu bi nurillah. And so we can recognize the shirk of the modern political system. Claiming to be sovereign. <coughs> claiming to have absolute uh, authority. Claiming to be able to be supreme lawmaker. Claiming to have the authority to make halal what Allah made haram and make haram what Allah made haram. And so the Tawbah tells us that shirk. This link between Surah al kaf and the Jal is therefore established. The Noor and the passage of Musa al-Islam and Khidr al-Islam. But there's another one before we end this morning. At the very beginning of Surah Al-Kahf, Alhamdulillah, الذي أنذل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوالا ولم نجعل له عوالا Praise be to Allah who sent on his servant this book and has ordained that in this book there is no crookedness. I wonder why. Why does he make this statement? <coughs> oh, I need only five rams worth of intelligence, not more than that, to recognize that he is saying crookedness here because he wants to direct my attention to the crookedness which has come to the book to the changes which they made in it. Hmm? Only five cents worth of run, five runs worth of intelligence, that's all you need. <coughs> so now I have a link between Surah al kaf and Dajjal, okay, the first ten ayah. And I have a link between the Jal now and the changes made in the book. So now I go to the changes made in the book. And when I go to the changes made in the book, meaning not the Quran, the previous scriptures, Bible, oh now I can read the world so clearly. When last you travel with the Jal donkey, you notice the, the, the last thing 
that happens before you board the donkey is the alcohol. Eh? And the first thing you see when you get off the donkey in the other airport is the alcohol. Have you ever traveled with a donkey? Have you seen it? Yeah. So now we go to the book. And guess what they did? They said that he, the Prophet, that he drank like uh, an American college student, they call it binge drinking until you are stone drunk. A prophet? His daughters did it. Oh, that's worse. They got their father stone drunk. And when they got him stone drunk, when I be loving Hagar, the first daughter slept with him to become pregnant. And when she became pregnant, then the second daughter slept with him to become pregnant. It's there in the Bible. So incest is what they wrote into the Bible with their own hands. Hmm? And alcohol, consumption of alcohol in this way, is written in the Bible, they own hands. It's a lie. So they pay the price for it. So the Jal attacks now. And he attacks with alcohol. And he attacks with incest. Hmm? And so you see, they planted an evil seed. And Allah in His wisdom ensures that history will not end until that evil seed grows into an evil tree and there is no one who can cut it down. This is how to read the scripture and read the world around us. So incest is not here by accident. We know it's going to grow more and more. And alcoholism and drug addiction is not here by accident. It's going to grow more and more. They changed the word of Allah when they said that it is haram for an Israelite to lend money on interest to another Israelite. It's still there in the Bible up to now. Still there. Come on, Rabbi, tell me why. Is a Jew not allowed to lend on interest to another Jew? Huh? Is it because you shouldn't rip off your own brother? Come on, Rabbi, why are you so quiet? Huh? But it is permissible to lend on interest to those who are not Israelites. So it's permissible to rip off the cockroaches. Adumiyun. <laughs> Because they changed the word of Allah, and we quoted from the Quran about that. Where, where was it in the Quran? Masabu. Then they took riba, even though they were prohibited from doing so. Hmm? Suratun? I can't hear you. No. Where is Hasbola? No. Okay, anyway. Surah Nisa. Correct. Wa akhrihim riba. Wa qadnuhu an. Wa akhrihim amal al-nasi bil-bautin. Ila akhir al-ayah. And so, they changed the word of Allah. And as a consequence, the Dajjal now attacks. With that, evil seed which is planted. And riba now grows into an evil tree and no one can cut it down. No. So the proliferation of riba in the world today is not by accident. It is possible for us to go to the Quran and the Quran will explain to us why the world is inundated with riba today. Why the world is inundated with alcoholism and drug addiction today? 
why incest is raising its ugly head everywhere. It is linked with the subject of the child. This is a very brief uh, addition to what we've already spoken to you about the jal. Uh, unfortunately, we will not have the time in this retreat to speak on the subject and to deal with the subject more extensively than this, but I believe you've already been given in the retreat a sufficient foundation on the subject. You can stay in touch with me. Uh, I, w I am in the process of writing a book on the subject of the child. I don't know how long it's going to take me to finish it. May Allah help me to finish this book. But if this book is finished, then you'll get as much as I can possibly give to you on the subject. But one last word. I expect you, my students, I expect you, to build higher than I have built and to extend the frontiers of knowledge because I work for a long, long, long time and great teachers have to teach me to be able to put these blocks in place. And there are things that I cannot understand because events have not as yet unfolded sufficiently. Like, I'm still not sure about the attack on the top of the spine for Kak and Maka. And they all fall down, um, paralyzed, and by next morning they'll all be dead. But then they'll shoot the arrows in the sky, and they say, we've killed those who are on earth, now let's kill those who are in the Samawad, and Allah will allow the arrows to come back down with blood. Hmm? Um, there is, you have to learn some more about space, the application of military technology to space, to be able to help these with these studies. Hmm? So I expect that they will be from you all, those who will apply yourselves to the study of the subject. It will take you just a little time to study and master what it took me a lifetime to do. Just a little time for you. And then you will continue the work to be able to explain the subject even more in the time that lies ahead. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.